Every single commemorative brick has been etched by Justin Bishop of Bishop Stone and Metal Art. We started with a handful of bricks and they just started growing and growing. So the process is pretty easy. You design uh, the letters and the layout on the computer, prints out on the plotter with the stencil. The stencil's made of rubber, so you can glue that down on the stone and sandblast it. It's cool, these people have worked 25 years at one place. It's a really long time. It's a good chunk of your life. And so I think it's cool that they give them a brick to take home. Today, we have hundreds of commemorative bricks lining our courtyard. And we'll soon have to expand our sidewalks out and further, perhaps even towards Iron Bridge Road. But when I, our employees, or our visitors walk down that path, those bricks serve as an excellent reminder of those who dedicated a huge portion of their professional lives to serving Chesterfield. Often, the work of such a person can go overlooked, but we hope these bricks will immortalize our gratitude towards them. Hi, I'm Kevin Carroll and I'm honored to be your representative for the Batoka District on the Chesterfield County Board of Supervisors. I'm here at the Radcliffe Conservation Area and did you know that this preserve provides access for fishing and boating all along the Appomattox River? The trails here offer a glimpse of abundant wildlife and woodlands. In our district alone there are 17 parks totaling over 1,100 acres. This includes athletic facilities at Horner Park and Edrick Recreation Center and Park. In the future, look for additional videos highlighting the parks all through Matoka and all of Chesterfield County. Good luck in the woods and good luck on the water.
you have leaves and yard waste piling up in your yard? Before you bag them up, consider this. Leaves, grass clippings, and branches contain lots of nutrients your yard can use. Instead of throwing them away, you can turn them into mulch and compost. Grass clippings can be applied in a thin layer across gardens and planting beds as a mulch. This will retain moisture and control weeds. Leaves can be shredded with a lawnmower and left on the ground. You can do this several times during the fall instead of bagging them. They will break down quickly and return nutrients to your soil. Bulk leaves can be composted by adding water and grass clippings. The compost can be used in gardens and planting beds too. If you do need to dispose of your leaves and yard waste, they can be taken to the yard waste areas at the Chesterfield County Convenience Centers. Leaves and yard debris cannot be dumped or blown into storm drains and drainage ditches. This can impact water quality and cause flooding, and it's against the law. To report unlawful discharges to the storm sewer system, call 804-717-6161. Thanks for watching. Be on the lookout for more videos about how you can prevent stormwater pollution. Why choose Virginia State University? Because our programs offer practical career opportunities in engineering, business, education, agriculture. A home escape plan is when you get your family together and you plan how to get out of your home. You need a home escape plan because you never know when a fire is gonna occur. Often fires happen in the middle of the night, so getting out of your house is very, very important. You have multiple people in your home, some are children, some are adults, some could be disabled, some may need help. So you're gonna to have to have a plan to get out of your house in case there is a fire. We tell everybody to get your family together, draw out a map of your house, going inside each and every room. Where are the windows? Where are the doors? Where are the stairs? What is the layout of your home? and then you just rehearse getting out of the house. And walk around and talk about your plan. What is your plan gonna be? So you're gonna have to practice this plan. Like anything, if you don't practice it, at 2.30 in the morning is when you're gonna be surprised by it. It is extremely important to have smoke alarms in your home, because as we know, smoke rises. And as that smoke rises, it's gonna hit that smoke alarm, and it's gonna give you that advanced warning you need to get out of your house. If you don't have a smoke alarm, the chances of you waking up with a room fully involved in smoke is, is much greater. So that advanced warning wakes you up, gives you the ability to navigate through your home and to exit using your exit plan before the smoke conditions get worse. If you don't have smoke alarms in your home, contact the fire department and we can help you. It's very important to have two ways out and the reason being your first way out may be blocked by fire or smoke. The second way may be clear. So that's why we have to think about two and even three ways out of your home. It is very important to teach all the children in the home, especially the young children. Teach them how to open their window. When our fire crews get on scene, the first thing we do is take a lap of your house and we're looking to see if anyone is at those windows. If that child can open that window and wave out the window, we will see him or her and throw a ladder and come and get them. It's very important to keep doors closed. It stops the smoke from entering the room, it stops the fire from entering the room, and it gives you a chance to have more time to escape. An outside meeting place is extremely important. When our crews arrive on scene, they want to know how many people are in the home and who is outside and who is not. It will dictate our operations, which we call rescue mode. If someone's in that house, we're going in the house, and we're going to find them, and we're going to get them out. So a meeting place can be a neighbor's front yard, a neighbor's mailbox is the best place to be. And when you see some of those fire officers roll up, tell them that you're out of the house. Have a head count. Everyone has to be involved and know the plan. Because again, at 2.30 in the morning when this fire happens, and it can happen to you, you have to go right into action and put your plan into place.
like to uh, introduce Kimberly Conley, Assistant Director for Citizen Information and Resource. Uh, she's been quite busy over the last month in our partnership with Virginia State University and the uh, various Black History uh, events uh, for Black History Month, and I was able to partake in two of them and, and again, learn something at every time I go to them. And she'll also follow up with actually something special that's going on at Virginia State University this week. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hello, Dr. Conley. Hello, how are you? Nice to see you. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Dr. Casey, thank you again. I'm coming to you today, before you today, to, as the co-chair of VSU Chesterfield County Black History Month celebration. Thank you for the opportunity to share a quick update on this year's celebration. On behalf of the Black History Month Committee, we appreciate the continued support, commitment, and participation in celebrating this annual celebration program for 33 years. It is important to educate our community on the rich history within Chesterfield County and the legacy of African Americans in our community. A, dynam a dynamic team, some of who are here with me today, began mo meeting monthly last summer planning programs, contacting speakers and presenters, and creating activities. This year's national theme, Black Health and Wellness, gave the committee inspiration the community enjoyed stellar performances recognizing Rosa Parks, hearing the story of Elizabeth Bowser, and the history of Coretta Scott King. They also learned about urban farming and engaged in an eye-opening discussion on the opioid crisis, along with other interesting topics. The annual scholarship recognition program, our signature program, was held Friday, February 18th, and it was emceed by Leland Pender, anchor and reporter with WTVR Channel 6. Six $2,500 scholarships were awarded that day to deserving Chesterfield County High School seniors who plan to attend a Virginia college or university. Dr. Lauren Powell, former director of the Office of Health Equity, shared a moving and inspirational message with our students and community. There were more than 20 programs and activities scheduled. The programs were engaging, educational, and well attended by the community. We secured outstanding presenters with topics that were relevant and important to our residents. We continue to hear positive feedback from the programs presented in February. I would be remiss if I did not acknowledge these activities would not have been possible without the following committee members. Co-chair, who was unable to be with me today, Udonis James from Virginia State University. Members, Regina Barnett-Tyler and Gwen Dandridge, also from Virginia State University. Jennifer Shepley and Jesse Kelly with Chesterfield County Public Library. Lauren Wynn, Donna Charles Koski, and Audrick Lancaster Boyce with Chesterfield County Public Schools. Along with these individuals, we are grateful for the staff support from Virginia State University, Chesterfield County, Chesterfield County Public Schools, Communications and Media Departments, and our own Chesterfield, Chesterfield Information Systems Technology. Please join me in take, thanking these, this talented team for their hard work, dedication, and commitment to planning a successful and stress-free <laughs> month of programs. Would you join me in recognizing my team? Please stand, team. Thank you. Many thanks also to our dedicated corporate and community sponsors that commit to providing funding each year to host a countywide program. I would like to thank them personally and on behalf of the county and Virginia State University. They are Columbia Gas, Dominion Energy, Virginia Credit Union, the Honorable Christopher Winslow, and the Honorable James and Judith Holland. A big thank you for their commitment and community support, as always. <laughs> Again, I would like to thank each of you for your participation. Thank you, Dr. Casey, for your leadership. Thank you to VSU's President, Dr. McCullough Abdullah, as well as Dr. James Worsley and Emily Ashley for your leadership, your participation, and continued support of this program. You all are the reason Chesterfield County 
is a strong leader in this region. We're looking forward to next year, and we're looking forward to your support. Thank you again. Now, Dr. Casey shared that I would give you a, a heads up or a little spotlight of what's happening in our community. The, I am so excited to share this because this is a delayed year, but the delay is not denied. This is in the second year, the United States Collegiate Athletic Association Small College National Basketball Championships. It returned to Chesterfield County this week from March 7th through the 10th. The tournament features Division I and II men's and women's games being held at Virginia State University in the Multipurpose Center, as well as Richard Bland College. The games are going very well. The championship games, it's still time, will be held Thursday, which is tomorrow, March 10th. Tip-off times, 12.30, 3.30, 6 p.m. and 8.45. Tickets are $18 for the day and can be purchased. So I would, if you're interested in joining and being a part of the camaraderie at M, the VSU M, 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 MPC, I will tell you, let's go and be there. We are thrilled that the Communications and Media Department has already highlighted within Chesterfield Happenings these activities that are happening now. So if you want to join them, rah, rah, congratulations to VSU for bringing that championship back to our community. Thank you, and this concludes CRR's updates. My goodness, Mr. Holland? Yep, Mr. Chairman, I certainly want to, Mr. Connolly, please stand there. And of course, the committee <laughs> members, let me say thank you all for an outstanding job well done this year. Uh, the scholarship breakfast, again, was excellent. I attended that. I enjoyed the activities. You make a difference in the region. In fact, you lead the region mm -hmm. and provide an excellent program for Black History Month. We thank you this year. A great job that you continue to do well. And we're looking forward to even greater programming as we also look to the summer as we celebrate again another national holiday right here in Chesterfield County, Juneteenth, I might add. So we're looking forward to that as well. But thank you all for your outstanding job and the leadership you exhibit along with Virginia State University it makes us a unique county throughout the region and throughout the nation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, I had the, the pleasure of going to the kickoff. Uh, I thought it was an absolute great event. Unfortunately, I couldn't make it for the scholarship, so I had to go out of town. But uh, um, uh, I'm going to try and come Friday. So I'll talk with you tomorrow about that. Yeah, sounds yeah. good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ms. Conley. Excellence in action, as always. We appreciate you, and we appreciate all the work that you do day in and day out. Thank, Thank you. Although she was trying to embarrass me at the kickoff. She wanted me to dance, and that would have been very embarrassing. I was saying. Well, we will um, we'll, we'll put that on the schedule for next year. I'm sure others will want to see that as well. Yeah. Be ready for next year. Yeah, yeah. Good. Great job, Ms. Conley. Uh, and I'll work, with, I'll work with him on dancing if y'all want me to. I'll be glad to work with him. <laughs> okay. We have now right. lost control of the I'm meeting. Up. Is... I'm up for that. Why choose VSU? Because the quality of education is outstanding. Student support is high. I love the beautiful campus. We're a family. I made friends for life. I'll be honest, it's the woo woo. are tasked with dismantling this house that uh, is almost 200 years old and in such a way that we can put it back together at another location in the same way that it was assembled the first time. We've had to be careful to track each brick as it came down and make sure that we pile it in a place with other brick from that wall or from a chimney or from uh, even to the point where we're saving the corners. All the corners are in one spot and as these get cleaned and sorted we'll also sort them into lengths. Not only are we dismantling it and making sure we track where everything goes and organizing it that way, we're also taking measurements as we go, taking photographs, documenting everything about how things were built. It's really incredibly well built. 
someone cared a lot when they put it together. It's of course important because it is one of only six um, full masonry homes uh, from the 19th century still standing in Chesterfield County. And in this case, the interior was so well preserved and it was so well done in the first place that it's, it's just a rare, rare home for some, something that age. I'm told that they think the year was 1834. I think the reason they think that is because there was a brick found and someone had carved that into it. Um, but that, that doesn't mean that it was built in 1834. We know that that means that it was at least there in 1834. I look at the mortar and I personally think it was a, it's a bit older than that. I'm always about what's interesting. To me, this is interesting. This will stand out to these guys. There's always this job that comes up every couple of years that is just one of those ones you're going to remember. And I knew that would be the case for them, and it's certainly been the case for me. And, and it was also exciting to see that a group of citizens got together and went into their own pockets, put in their own energy, they, they raised awareness, they did what they had to do something that was for the greater good. I was two. <laughs> it was 1959, so you can do the math on that. We came here because my dad was, uh, had gotten a job as a dairy inspector, and there were dairies all over this region in those days. Junior Justice and her husband Robert had um, just bought the house, but they couldn't live here because they were taking care of his father's dairy. We lived here for three or four years till 19. 61, 62, and it was paradise. We played under these two trees, which were not nearly this big, and we had chickens, and it was just, it was just a magical place. And I know I had Virginia Justice, we call her Aunt Jenny, as a teacher. I know her heart for this house. I know our heart for this house, my parents' heart for this house. I am so grateful that it's going to be preserved and then it's going to get to tell a story that I was never taught as a child growing up in Midlothian going to school here. Nobody ever told me that enslaved people built this house, that the bricks were made here, that the beautiful moldings that I loved would have been hand carved. Nobody ever connected it to the mines, which we all knew about, but we really didn't learn about how all of this was a part of the founding of the entire country. I was here when the second floor was kind of coming down, and I, I just knew that Aunt Jenny and Mama and Daddy were telling me, Jane Ellen, you need to get this job done. This is important, and so that's why I'm here. We're getting it done. Hello, I'm Gloria Fry. As the chair of the Chesterfield County Planning Commission, I'm here to tell you about a multi-year project that we're beginning here in Chesterfield. Over the next two to three years, we will be undergoing a comprehensive rewrite of the county's zoning ordinance. You may be thinking, what's a zoning ordinance and how does it affect me? Well, that's a great question. Zoning laws regulate the use of land within the county. They control the ways in which land can be developed and what purposes the land can serve. Zoning is a means to protect the health and safety of a community. For an individual, it regulates items such as where a garage or a shed can be located on your property. For a developer, the ordinance regulates the impact that a proposed project will have on public infrastructure such as roads and schools. Did you know that the zoning ordinance is the primary tool to implement the county's comprehensive plan, which is the overall vision for the future of the county? While the comprehensive plan itself has changed over time to reflect the changes in the vision for the county, much of the core content of the current zoning ordinance remains unchanged since the 1970s. 
yes, the 70s. As you can imagine, a lot has changed since then. Now let's talk about how we are going to modernize this ordinance. Rachel, can you tell us a little more? Thanks, Mrs. Fry. I'd love to. Hi, I'm Rachel Chiappa. I'm the project manager for the zoning ordinance rewrite. Over the next couple of years, we will be working through four different project phases with the help of our consultant team, led by Mark White of White & Smith. The outcome of this project will be a completely new and modern zoning ordinance. While working through these four phases, we will be keeping the main goal in mind, which is to make the new document more flexible and user-friendly. Right now, we are in the diagnostic phase of the project. This is the first phase.